And good evening, Calvary Baptist Church and everyone else clicking in on this Bible study tonight. Good to have you here. I'm wondering how good you are anticipating things. Do you remember the Heinz ketchup commercial? You know, the two boys, ketchup, trying to come out of the glass bottle on the hamburger. Anticipation, it's making me wait. That's kind of what I'm talking about tonight is anticipation. And so many times we, we're a little bit too busy to anticipate anything. We're always ahead of it. I asked the sec church secretary and youth pastor, Cindy and John, what was one thing in their life that they anticipated either receiving or doing? Uh, Cindy said she anticipated when she was younger of moving across the state of Texas. Big, big, big move. John said uh, when they heard they were going to go on a cruise and the anticipation building up to that. And you could say I'm kind of hiding the word patience behind the word anticipation, and, and they kind of go in hand in hand. So with that on your mind, let's go in prayer, and then we'll get into the Bible study tonight. God, I thank you for today, the blessings that you have given us all the way through this, the health that you provided over us who are healthy, and the healing over those who aren't healthy. God, I pray for those who are who are wondering where their next paycheck is going to come from, where their next meal is going to come from. You are the great provider. As I uh, was able to speak your word last Sunday, you are the God of all impossibilities, and in, if it's your will, you make them possible. So thank you for tonight. Thank you for the Bible study of anticipation, and uh, let us get into that. We ask in your name. Amen. Well, well how good are you at anticipating things? Are you, are you laid back? You're just sitting there comfortable and relaxed, just watching the clock slowly tick one second at a time. Or you're like, oh man, I hope it gets here quick. I can't wait. It's kind of like Christmas. The closer Christmas gets, the anticipation builds up. I know for a lot of kids, I know for me as a kid, you know, especially if Kim has kind of surprised me with something and, and Blythe hasn't told me about it yet. Way to go, Blythe. Uh, so many times we... We anticipate things. I went to the dictionary, just wondering what anticipation was, and it's this. It says, the realization in advance or the foretaste of something, an expectation or hope of receiving something. You anticipate. And yeah, let's go ahead and talk to the elephant in the room. Uh, we are all anticipating when. When are the church doors going to open back up? When is this building going to come back to life. We'll, we'll get that in a minute. I'm in the book of James. If you have your Bible with you, and I hope you do, uh, James chapter 1 is a very interesting beginning because James starts out with James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations. Kind of gave you his quick little bio, but then he, he kind of jumps into this almost crazy, bold statement right after his introduction. And he says these words in verses 2 and 3. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. I believe we're in a trial. And I believe we're anticipating the end of that trial. We're almost on pins and needles sometimes when the news comes on and we hear the governor's going to speak or the president's going to talk about reopening uh, I was even talked to today about, hey, when is the church going to open again? Uh, let me just tell you, I'll say it a number of times tonight, I want it open no more than anybody else I want it open. I want this building teeming with people again. I, on Wednesday night, I want to hear the stampede upstairs from the children running and laughing and playing that we in this Bible study on Wednesday night have to raise our voices over theirs. That's what I want to hear. I, I want to see that worship center packed, packed. And I have said it over and over. And if, if the church doesn't come back, shame on the church. If people don't start flooding back to the church, if, if new people don't start coming, if they wondered about God, if he's real, let me tell you, once again, a little over a month ago, God in one swipe of his mighty hand brought this world to a stop with sports, finances, anything you can think of. So he is real. You can deny him all you want. That does not make him any less real. 
I mean, you, you can deny that fire is hot all you want. That doesn't make it any less real that you put your hand in the fire. It will burn you. And so here we go in James. Um, he makes that statement. Consider it pure joy, my brother. So whenever you face trials of many kinds, because we're anticipating something in this trial. We're anticipating, one, learning from this trial that we're in. What are we learning? If we're not learning anything, then God wouldn't put us in this trial. But we better be learning things, one, to be patient, that God is in control. Uh, we were doing a, a quick little air and blessing a church member just a little while this, uh, ago this, this afternoon and I go to greet him and it's called chicken wing. It's when you throw your elbow out there like a chicken wing and chicken wing him. And I can't wait till that day happens when you don't have to do that anymore, but but what if it didn't? What if we were, that was the new normal now? We chicken winged everybody. I mean, Calvary has, is known for the hugging, happiest, loving church. Would that change it? Would it just become a mundane, lackadaisical church? Oh, man, let me tell you, we wouldn't. Because we are going to live in the fear not world. We're not going to live in the fear filled world. Fear not, for I am with you. And that's where we're going to live. So James is saying, hey, hey, Consider this joy. Find the rainbow. Seize the day. Carpe diem. Seize the day. And I was listening to the coach of Texas Tech. He was encouraging Meadow and the students out there, and he says, man, control your response. And I thought those were very powerful words in this era that we're in right now. Control your response. When you hear about something and when you hear, see the doom and gloom being broadcast, from media streams everywhere, and you just want to blurt something back out, control your response. As a matter of fact, in this time right now, consider it pure joy, my brothers, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. And perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete. Anticipating the end coming is maturing each and every one of us. And it can, it can make us bitter, and it can make us bark, and it can make us bite, or it can make us better and blessed and a blessing to others. Just by controlling your response on how, on the day-to-day -day things that come in and out of your life. We actually had the phone ringing at the church today a number of different times. And that was so good to hear people calling the church again. We've got some things going on around the church and we're hoping that when the doors do open, you're going to be amazed at just a little bit of work that's been done around here. And let me tell you, John is anticipating a big result because John and some folks have been working downstairs for the, for the students and they've got a big blessing coming down there. We are not going to sit on the stump and be the bump. We're not. We're going to believe that these doors are going to open. That's why things are going on. That's why if you drive by the church, there's some beautiful flowers that have been planted in the pots out there. And because springtime is here and then summer is coming, the church does not have a black line drawn across it, the building. We are going to re-enter the building soon. I just don't know when soon is, but I'm anticipating soon being soon. And so James writes these words and he says, you know, there's so many things that, that in life, it's, what, is, what does life look like right now? Life could look six feet further away from other people. Life looks different behind a mask. There are some people I don't even recognize. They have to take off their mask before I even know who they are. And there are some people that, that just I've uh, met through this, just like delivering food, that I just say, God bless you to, that I would never see. And so I'm anticipating God doing great and big and mighty things through the small things that we're doing. I'm anticipating hearing some amazing stories. And yes, there's no doubt, we're going to break out the camera so you can video yourself and say, hey, this is what happened to me in this journey. This is how God spoke to me. This is how God worked through me. This is how God humbled me. This is how my fire came back through God's discipline to me. Things I hopefully will say have changed drastically, radically for the good of the church that we would anticipate a mighty birth of growth through this. 
that what man has seen as evil and bad and wicked, God's going to take and make something good out of it. Because Romans 8 and 28, what is it? In all things, God works for the good. So there's some good things coming. And I seem to be rambling on because I can see the clock really, really big. And so as we move through here, uh, think about this. What does it look like in your life? And what does it not look like through the challenges of anticipation right now? Maybe you want to text that to me. Maybe you want to email that to me. What does your life look like right now? How are you anticipating? How are you preparing for that day when you get that text, that phone call, however you get notified that, hey, Sunday morning we're back inside church? Are you anticipating that? Does it make you tingle right now? Are you anticipating hearing that, hey, we're having church. The body is coming to the house of the Lord. Will you, will you call somebody? Have you already been inviting people? Ha, has the fire in you started killing into an inferno, a blaze? Or is it still just a flicker? Or still going, oh, well, if it, if it opens up, that's fine. If not, I'm good just watching Steve on the old internet there. I hope that's not true. Because God made us to gather collectively, community together, and to worship together. We live with anticipation means that we shouldn't ignore what's going on right now and just look on down the road. We live in anticipation on what's happening next door, what's our neighbors going through. Have we reached out to them? Have, have we been showing them the light of Jesus in this whole journey? Have we grabbed the newspaper and pitched it on their porch? Have we, have we mowed their yard? Have we spread a little more water on their yard as ours? I mean, I, knew, I, I know that new life is coming. I know it is, if we'll just allow it to change us. James goes on, he says that faith develops perseverance. Perseverance has finished its work so that you'll be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Not lacking anything. Because if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and in it will be given to him. But when he asks, he but when he asks, he must believe and not doubt. Meaning when you ask God for something like this virus to be gone, you must believe it's going to be gone. You know, hey God, I hope one day this virus is gone. It's God. When this virus is gone, that's a belief, that's a claim, that's a command. When this virus is gone, I'm going to be back in church. I'm going to drag my biscuit back. It might be bigger because we've been eating a whole lot. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to get myself to church. That's what you should be saying to yourself, to your family, to your friends, and even strangers that God's put in your life. Every single one of us should learn and be anticipating that day. A lot of times we just talk about anticipating when the Lord returns. Oh, I tell you, we anticipate that. But now we're anticipating coming back inside the Lord's house, coming back into his living room, as I call it, to sit or to stand or to raise a hand or to say an amen or, or to sing openly like you have never sung before. I hope you hear the passion and excitement in my voice because I can't wait. Oh, well, I'm not going to let anything hold me back anymore. I had the, the silliest things that go over and over in my mind about, oh, this, there's a piece of dust over there. There's a mark on the carpet. I wonder what somebody's going to be concerned about. Uh, not anymore. I'm just thankful to come into the house of the Lord and worship openly, boldly, unashamedly. And I can't wait. I'm in anticipating that day when it happens, when the church building is open. And I, and I know, I'll say it again. So when is the church going to have worship service again? I'm anticipating hearing that news anytime. I'm anticipating the good news that it's coming soon. Probably won't be this Sunday, the last Sunday in April. Maybe it's coming soon. Maybe it's going to be the first Sunday in May or the second, maybe Mother's Day. And what an amazing gift to give mom is the kids getting up on Mother's Day morning saying, Hey, Mom, 
we get to go to church and it's going to be just for you. But no matter when, we've got to be excited right now because God is moving right now. God is stirring in the hearts that haven't been stirred in a long time. I've read that more Bibles have been sold during this than ever before. Could you just imagine why? That more people are clicking on and live streaming. Last Sunday in our live stream, I think they said over 800 views, over 200 plus live stream the service. It's absolutely unprecedented that you would just think, and maybe my number's are way off, but I'm thinking somewhere around 1,000 people somehow stream through Calvary Baptist website or Facebook Live or YouTube and somehow for a moment or two paused and heard the Word of God sung or spoken just like next or this coming Sunday, drive-in church, yep. You, you wanted it? Well, here it comes. It's going to take a little more work for Kirk and Chuck and John and myself of moving outside. We're hoping to get a tent on top of the trailer to give us a little shade from the glare. No, not just from my head. But just we're hoping to have a better presentation so we can see better. But it's going to be an amazing day. That means you guys need to show up. You need to pull up in that parking lot. Unless, and, and again, some of you pulled up late. Duh. Surprise. And you had to be in the back and you couldn't see. So you had to get out your phone or your iPad and stream us while you're in the parking lot. But let me tell you what happens when you get here early. You get the front row. You get to park on the street where we're at. So maybe you need to come early. But no matter what, maybe, maybe you know, you need to flash your lights when something is said amen and honk your horn when you're excited, wave at somebody next door to you and get that fire going again. When you're doubting it, you must ask and believe because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That man should, think, should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. You know, so many times we go, well, I'm going to show up, and then we have that word, but, but nothing's going to happen, and nothing's going to be stirred, and no one's going to move. And, but what if he said, you know what, I'm going because God's going to move. That's what I'm claiming. God is going to move in a big, big God way when the doors open up. Maybe it's this Sunday. Maybe the, the parking lots will be packed. It's up to you if you spread the word through your social media. But no matter what, I want to challenge you. You to come expecting, anticipating God to move even outside. It doesn't have to be inside in a building. Even when you're outside in your own vehicle and I'm preaching to you and John singing to you, God's spirit is here. Anticipating something big coming. I'm anticipating the Holy Spirit to move like a breeze through the West Texas trees. But you have to be here. So right there in James, he, he kind of spoke of himself briefly, and then he said some amazing things, and I want to close with this. I want to encourage you in these next four days before Sunday morning to anticipate something big happening, something God big happening, that God is in the big business still, He's still in the mountain moving kind of God business. He's still in the business of taking what we see as impossible and making it possible. Because in God, all things are possible. So I want to encourage you these next four days, maybe you need to get fired up. Maybe you need to fan the flames into an inferno and start spreading the word, hey, Calvary's doing drive-in church. Come, come park next to us. And see what the Holy Spirit's going to do. So let's anticipate this Sunday. God moving in a holy, big, giant, God-sized way. Let's pray. God, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for the blessings that you give me to be passionate to the people watching. And I pray they will become passionate about spreading the word. About anticipating this coming Sunday. What you're going to do. Yeah, somebody's heart's going to be stirred in their vehicle. That maybe a relationship's going to be mended. That maybe a burden's going to be lifted. But no matter what, you're going to move if we believe it and do not doubt. 
We claim this in the holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday morning.